Facebook watching everything you do online? There's actually a simple solution, DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more, all for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with a push of a button. DuckDuckGo, privacy simplified. It's getting tenser and tenser in Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia accuse each other of planning provocations outside of Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Russian forces took control of it shortly after invading in February. The UN and Ukraine are demanding Russia withdraw their troops from that plant. The Kremlin says that the idea is unacceptable, arguing that pulling back forces will make the site even more vulnerable. Ukraine's state nuclear company today claims that Russia plans to turn off the power plant to disconnect them from the power grid. Russian officials say that they might shut down the facility if continued shellings persist. That's Fox's Alex Hogan in Kiev. Two more buses arrived in New York City this morning, sent from Texas, carrying migrants who came to the U.S. illegally. It's part of Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott's protest of Biden administration border policies. Where Texas said you're not welcome and New York has said you are welcome, um, we think it's incumbent upon the federal government to figure out ways to help us. Uh, to meet that need. That's David Banks, New York City's school's chancellor. They have a new program called Project Open Arms to help enroll the students of migrants into schools this fall. They'll pledge allegiance to the flag again in Fargo, North Dakota at school board meetings after it went away in an objection to the under God part. The Fargo Board of Education reversing course on the previous board's controversial decision to stop reciting the Pledge of Allegiance at its monthly meetings, saying the pledge doesn't align with the district's diversity and inclusion code. The latest decision to reinstate the pledge follows widespread complaints, some describing the change in school board members as un-American. North Dakota Republican Governor Doug Burgum earlier this week pushing new legislation that would require public school and governing bodies to administer the patriotic oath. Jeff Manasso, Fox News. On Wall Street, a sell-off the Dow Nasdaq, both down over 200 points. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. I'm Connell McShane. This is the Fox Business Report. Stocks opened lower. Investors are looking at mixed earnings news and are assessing conflicting messages on the future of interest rates from Fed officials. General Motors is getting a boost from its decision to resume dividend payments to shareholders in September. It'll also return to making stock buybacks. Foot Locker shares are rallying. It reported an upbeat quarter and has named former Ulta Beauty executive Mary Dillon as its new CEO. Though Bed Bath & Beyond shares have now lost significant value since billionaire investor Ryan Cohen sold off his shares of the company. Cineworld, the owner of Regal Cinemas, is preparing for a bankruptcy filing. The company says it's been seeing a gradual recovery in attendance since theaters reopened last year, but it's not enough to revive the company. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Cosola, invested in you. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Terry. Residents of California are once again. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220. Canyon Country, California. K260 CO 98.1 FM. Santa Clarita, California. SCVI is a tuition free TK through 12 charter school that gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely. We offer a customized learning program built around your child's unique interests and strengths with the only international baccalaureate program in all of Santa Clarita. Our approach keeps students and families in step no matter where your learning is taking place. Be empowered to make your mark on the world at SCVI. To take a tour or enroll now in our one-of-a-kind program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. 
Celebrate summer with Dunkin' Lemonade Refreshers. Try the strawberry dragon fruit, peach passion, or the mango pineapple. Don't forget to grab a bite to eat. How about the tomato pesto grilled cheese, roasted tomatoes, pesto spread, and white cheddar on sourdough? Order ahead with the Dunkin' app and accumulate points. Located on Bokeh Canyon in the Lowe's Shopping Center and on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country, both with curbside pickup or use the drive through at Sierra Highway. Santa Clarita runs on Dunkin'. SCVI is a tuition-free TK-12 through charter school that gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely. We offer a customized learning program built around your child's unique interests and strengths with the only international baccalaureate program in all of Santa Clarita. Our approach keeps students and families in step no matter where your learning is taking place. Be empowered to make your mark on the world at SCVI. To take a tour or enroll now in our one-of-a-kind program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Helping lead the way to a greener future, all of Burtech's Santa Clarita Valley waste collection trucks run on clean, burning natural gas. Burtech takes pride in their community, and they've been serving the SCV for nearly two decades. Because at Burtech, we'll take care of it. No words can describe the power of belonging to a group of close friends or being part of a family. Insight Treatment Center was founded more than 20 years ago to give teenagers a community of friends and family as they overcome issues like depression, anxiety, and trauma. The new Santa Clarita location is a COVID-secure environment where distance and good airflow are a priority. As a leader in providing intensive outpatient treatment to teenagers, Insight Treatment Center in Santa Clarita is here to help. Call 888-295-9995 or go online to insighttreatment.com. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and we are back. Yeah, yeah. For those of you that remember our show, we were on a bit of a hiatus. Our, our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you by SCVI and I lead schools. We are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've also got a fully accredited online school and... And our homeschool program is just absolutely blowing up. I think we've got well over 3,000 kids in, in our homeschool program. That program is called iLead Exploration. But you know what's easier? Just go to iLeadSchools.org, and you can check information on any of our classroom-based uh, Monday through Friday schools or our online school, our homeschool, any program we've got. So, yeah, we've got our, uh, we've got our eye on education, both here in Santa Clarita as well as, well as across the nation. But like our show says, we also keep that other eye on the valley, bringing you everything you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And we, and we try to, to do so while bringing a smile to your face because uh, I've got that personal philosophy that uh, I don't do anything unless I can laugh while I'm doing it. It makes family functions and board meetings interesting, but uh, if you ever see me at a funeral, yeah, sit close by. So yeah, we took a little hiatus and, uh, and we ran some, uh, some, some reruns over the summer, not for vacation, not for vacation, but uh, but we had to help prepare our staff for the upcoming school year. You know, we we shift into summer and we start uh, start getting everything ready because school is what we do, and, and we want to make sure that our staff is is ready to go and and ready to launch another successful year. But we are back, and and we're happy to be back. Patty, how you been, brother? Good to see you. Missed you, man. Missed you too. Missed you too. Good to see you. Good, Good to, to be see back. you. Yeah, back in the saddle again. What can right? I say? Yeah, it's our first <laughs> show back, and and we've got a great one for you. Um, you know, we always get people were lined up in the summertime, and, and so we're super excited. In just a moment, we'll talk to the executive director of iLead California Schools, Amanda Fisher. She and her team are, like I said, about to launch the 2022-2023 school year here across Southern California, and they're set. They're set for a great year. Just lined up to to hit it out of the park this year. And in hour number two, we'll have Jeff Barber. Y'all remember Jeff? He's been with us before. He is the arts and events supervisor for the city of Santa Clarita, and he also manages the main theater here on Main Street. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to, to him in hour number two. And then as we do, we'll wrap up the show with my, 
Well, with my stupid brother. Yeah, that's right. Two and a half years later, Mom still makes me share my radio show with him, but, but does he share his cool new Jeep with me? What about that, huh, Mom? Anyways, yeah, Big T will be here, and, uh, and we'll have fun and uh, trivia for us. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, so, yeah, stick around, and let's get to it. As I said, our, our first guest brings more than two decades of educational experiences to iLead schools, now leading the team that includes six schools and over 6,000 students. Wow, it's amazing how we've grown into this new school year. Amanda Fisher has served as a teacher, an assistant principal, principal, director, and assistant superintendent here in the Valley and uh, at various schools and, and, and various school districts. Amanda Fisher now enters her fifth year as the executive director of iLead California. And, and you think you're OGSCV, Amanda and her fam well, not, not Amanda, but Amanda's family <laughs> has lived in the Santa Clarita Valley for well over a hundred years. That's right. Not Amanda, but, but her family has been drilling for oil in Pico Canyon and, and riding their horses down to the Saugus Cafe for Sunday brunch for a long, long time now. Amanda, welcome back to Eye on the Valley. Thanks, Matt, for having me. We love having you in, and it's a great way to start off the, the school year. Um, well, and, and as you know, we like to have uh, oftentimes our, our kids and our our facilitators, which is what we call our teachers on, on the show, but they're busy. They're, they still got their, their, their sleeves rolled up and they're getting their classrooms ready. School starts here uh, next week. But I mentioned, Amanda, your impressive resume. You've been uh, a, a teacher, an educator, an educational leader uh, for, gosh, it's amazing, over two decades, over 20 years here in, in Santa Cruz Valley. Um, so what brought you to iLead in 2018? What made you make the move over to charter schools? Yeah, so I've spent 20 years in traditional public schools. So I got my start with Cass Stake, and I loved that district, and I taught elementary school in Cass Stake. And then I went and I taught for the William S. Hart School District. Mm -hmm. I taught both at Hart High School. I'm a graduate, alumni of Hart High School. Oh, and then you went back to your alma and mater to I teach. Went, it, I How did. Cool. It was so cool. And then after that, I went and taught at Learning Post, which was awesome because it was the first time that I was in um, a different environment, not that traditional classroom environment. And I really enjoyed being at Learning Post. Then I got my admin credential and I went and worked for the Sulphur Springs School District as a principal, loved Sulphur Springs, and then went on and became an assistant superintendent in Acton Aguadolce School District. These school districts are thriving. They are great districts doing great things oh, yeah. with great teachers. And so it wasn't about leaving the traditional public schools because they weren't doing or they weren't meeting my needs. But when I got to act in Aguadolce, what happened was I was I got the opportunity to oversee charter schools. And I was overseeing like 16 charter schools at the time. Mm. And I found out that charter schools, really, there's some, there's some awesome schools out there, like yeah. I lead. And <laughs> then there's some schools that weren't doing such great stuff. But I learned that there was a lot of innovation and things happening that I wanted to be a part of. I got to read these charter petitions. They're about 500-page documents, <laughs> and they say documents. everything that the charter is going to do. And inside Eileen's charter, it talked about really the whole child. Mm -hmm. And it was about personalizing the learning and knowing who that child was and making sure that we were meeting that specific kid's needs from everything, from social-emotional to academics, and we made a plan for that. And so when I read that charter position, it just resonated with my heart. And I said, I want to work for them. I had baby number four. <laughs> and I said, hey, Amber and Dawn, who are the founders of iLead, I called them and I said, hey, I'm ready for a change. I want to try and do something different. And can I be a part of your team? And so that's how I got to iLead. And I, they truly do live up to being personalized learning and meeting the needs of individuals, and I'm so grateful to be here. I love that. You know, um, <laughs> I had a little bit different story when I first came to iLead. I thought, these people are crazy and they work really hard. I'm going to stick around for a year and then leave. But, um, you know, I had a, a background in the traditional district as well, but great big, huge ditch district a little bit south of here. Um, any guesses? <laughs> um, <laughs> and... And then from there, I went and I, I actually moved out of the country and worked with a school that did focus heavily on educating the whole child. And I realized I, I've been doing, I had been doing education for 11 years that was kind of like, you know, just painting the outside of your house. And, and, and if the, you know, the, the wood is solid and everything, uh, the foundation is solid, then, then that paint job is good enough. But 
oftentimes you've got an older house or, or you know, you got wood rot and to slap paint on it, it just isn't enough. You've got to get in and, 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 and treat what's behind that facade. And that's what I realized I was able to do when I was at this other school. And when I, when I spent some time with Eileen, it was about a third of the way through my first year, I realized that's what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing here. And I love that. So in that way, we're a little bit different. Um, but that's not the only way that our schools, SCDI and ILEAD schools, are, are different from, uh, from a traditional district school. And that's really the, the raison d'etre, right? The mm-hmm. reason that charters exist is to do something different to innovate, to try new things, almost like a, like a lab school, right? And, and that's where oftentimes a, a lot of our innovation comes out of charters. Um, and then districts will adopt those, those changes as they see fit sometimes. Um, so they exist to bring something new or different to our community. So what makes SCDI and ILEAD different? So our cornerstones, like I said, are really the individualized learning project-based learning and social-emotional learning. And I know we're hearing a lot about social-emotional learning in schools right now, but this is something that I am really proud of, Eileen. This has been who we are since inception 13 since one, years yeah. ago. So this isn't something new to us. Um, we, we're really good at it. And so, um, but those are the cornerstones of who we are. And like Matt said, innovation's key. Like we can't keep like, this is the only thing we do because we have to be innovative and creative. And so our schools are developing and growing and each one is kind of getting their own focus. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, we have three different, almost four different types of schools. So we have seat-based schools here in the area, like you said, from Lancaster, SCVI, and Agua Dulce. And I love that. We kind of spot the North Valley, right? We've got Santa Cruz Valley, uh, the Agua Dulce area, uh, kind of midway, and then up in Lancaster, uh, there's a, a seat-based charter. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Charter Speak, that's kind of what you think of when you think of school, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 3, a classroom-based school. They look different. They, they, <laughs> oh, they look very different, right. And we'll get into that in just a second. Um, but then we've got some other programs that aren't considered seat-based. They're independent study, but even that, it's not just, here, here's your work, go home and bring it back. It's, it's Right, exactly. So then we have our online program, which is really all online, but you have facilitators. Remember, we call our teachers facilitators. So you have your facilitators that you're meeting with regularly, and there's group classes you can go to, and there's lunch bunches, and there's all kinds of things, but it's done virtually through this online, our online school. That's for the, the parent who really doesn't want, like, they don't want to homeschool. This is for right. the parent who really wants hands off, help me, kid wants to be remote, and teach my child. And that's who that program is for. There were a lot of families during the pandemic that just discovered um, out of, you know, because schools went home. But uh, eventually, you know, teachers got online and teachers were doing the teaching. Yeah, mom and dad, depending on the age of the kid, had to keep an eye on it. But some kids, it was hard on a lot of kids, but some kids really took to it. In fact, I remember interviewing some of our learners at SCDI and, and they said, you know, distance learning, I really liked and I find I'm participating more because I'm not shy to speak up in class and a lot of kids are moving toward like an online program but like you said it's not a program that mom and dad have to teach or supervise. Yeah so the, our online program is definitely that and then we go to our largest program which is our home study program which is really mom, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, somebody is kind of involved helping in that program. Again you have a facilitator they have about 25 learners on their roster they make you a completely personalized plan that matches the state standards and all of those things builds in the project-based learning and then you work on that and you can check in as much or as little as you want as long as we get you every 20 days and so some of those kids are checking in daily with their teachers some of them are checking in weekly with their teacher there's park days and there's activities and there's educational funds that you can use in order to boost that curriculum so that is our largest program and then we do have a hybrid program Um, which is pretty awesome too, which kids can come into the studio two days a week and then do the rest of their work at home. So we offer a lot of options to kids and families depending on their needs and what matches their learning style best. Yeah, and it's it's funny. I've spoken with a few families that, uh, that love that hybrid program because 
as you know, a lot of families do ask that question. Okay, if you if you homeschool your kid, when do they get inter- get to interact with other kids? Well, in this hybrid program, it's it's a schedule, and it's twice a week, and and then also the family, whoever's kind of running that curriculum kind of appreciates that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple days a week, I get to drop my kid off and and take care of my things and, and then, and then pick them up. Now you mentioned, let's go back to our, our, um, our seat-based schools. You said they, they look different. What, what do you mean by that? How are our schools physically different? Because we do get that kind of shocked look when, when families come in for tours. Wait a minute. You said we were going to see classrooms and this doesn't look like a classroom. So there are classrooms, but they're Mm -hmm. open concept classrooms. There's not traditional seating. You're not going to walk in and see desks lined up in rows. And really, our philosophy has been based on the book Campfire to the Holodeck. And so you're going to see the spaces built out in that way. So there's the campfire where you meet for the direct instruction. There is... The, you know, tables grouped where kids are going to collaborate and, and work together on projects because that's really how our standard, our projects are aligned to standards and we teach them through that methodology. Um, you see a lot of interaction. The classes are not quiet. Kids are allowed to move. Facilitators are allowed to move. The staff is moving around. It is way louder. I know I brought a friend over from a, uh-huh. a traditional school and I'm like, come see our school. And she's like, it's loud. I mean, it is It is definitely, there's a lot going on. There's energy. The Life kids are engaged. Yeah. Life is happening. Yeah. And so it's, again, like, it has to be an environment that you want. It's different. Come see our schools. They're different. They're exciting. There's a lot happening at them. Yeah. It, um, you know, it was funny. I mentioned I had 16 years experience when I came to ILEAD, but it was really, really traditional. Um and I think probably my first week, when it was silent reading time, kids are taking off their shoes and they're laying on the ground or they're yeah. sitting under their desk. <laughs> yeah. and, and I started telling my learners, come on, sit up in your chair. But now fortunately, there was another facilitator in the room and they were like, why? Why do they have to sit up? And I thought, well, that's a pretty good point because when I read my I book can't. at home, I lay on the couch. So why can't he lay on the floor? Or, you know, read my book sitting in the back of the boat. So what does it matter as long as they're developing a, a love for learning and they feel they feel at home when they're at school? And if our kids can feel at home, now that oftentimes the biggest part of the battle is, is already won, right? Yeah. I think it, that's another part. Like, we are really student-centered. Like, mm-hmm. the, the or learner-centered is our word. <laughs> uh, we're really learner-centered. And so we do things because it's best for the learner, not necessarily because it's best for the adult. And so I think we're always challenging that lens. Are we doing this because it's the way, like you just said, the way we've always done it? Or are we doing it because it's best and it's going to make this child grow into this amazing adult? You know, I... I don't really want to go down that vein, but you're right. A lot of times in education, decisions are made based on what's best for adults, not kids. And that that really is putting not only putting the cart before the horse, but not even attaching the two. Um, we did say, you know, life happens, and life does happen, but we still are dedicated to our mission to educating kids. Talk to me real quick about empower generations now that one's a little bit different of an education model um it's uh it's an independent study model school because of realities um but we also have a campus that that sees a lot of kids up in lancaster what is empower generations what's that program uh empower generations is one of my favorite programs it is it was built for pregnant and parenting teens so not only is there you know the regular curriculum that's taught in order to graduate from high school but it also has built into it um how to be a good mom how to be a good dad you are allowed to bring your child to our campus and we have care for them Mm. um you do not just have to be a pregnant and parenting teen to attend this campus or you can also it's for those learners who really want that family feel, close-knit, competency-based education, we're going to prepare you to leave us and be ready to go on to that college or that career. Um, we have lots of resources for you in the community. Um, and that, again, is up in Lancaster. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to an educational leader, um, someone pretty high up in their in their school district a while back, and 
and asking, so so what does your district do with, with kids when they get pregnant? Because, I mean, this has been going on a long time. And his response was, and I give him kudos, his response was very frank. Typically, we move them over to a continuation school until they drop out. Until they drop out, because that was literally the expectation. And it broke my heart um, because, you know, the reality shifts for these kids. And and they've got some new priorities in their lives oftentimes. But that doesn't mean that they can't or don't want to continue their education. This is one of my favorite. I, you gave me chills because it made me think back to graduation at Empower Generations. Yeah. It's pretty amazing to see these learners up on stage with their babies. Mm -hmm. Some of their babies are five years old and they've made it through and they've accomplished yeah. it and they got through and they are not dropouts. Some of these babies are two, three months old. But it's pretty <laughs> awesome to see everybody standing on stage and doing this as a family and accomplishing their goals. Yeah. Amanda Fisher is executive director of ILEAD California Charter Schools, and she joins us this morning serving SCDI and all six ILEAD schools across Southern California. When we get back, I want to talk about um, the, the education model of, of all of our schools, project-based learning, as well as, you know, we still have to talk about some of the pandemic-related issues. So do stick around. I'm Matt Watson with Amanda Fisher, and you are listening to SCDI and ILEAD Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station. KHTS. Summer safety tips from Susan Owen, managing partner and personal injury law firm Owen Patterson and Owen. Rules are put in place for a reason and especially during this extremely hot weather, the risk of fire is so great. We did have a case at one time where a little girl was playing around a fire at a beach and fell directly onto the coals. I am always worried about safety. Only have barbecues where they are allowed. If you've been injured in any way, call 888-OPO-WINS. OPO Law Com. If you need help at home or at the office, call Made For You. Made For You is a locally owned, bonded, and licensed cleaning service with over 20 years of experience. All employees are vetted for your protection. No need to buy products or equipment. The Made For You staff comes complete with everything needed to make your home or office cleaner than ever. Hire Made For You one time, as needed, or an ongoing basis. No room is off limits. Laundry and ironing services are also available. Call Made For You for a free estimate, 255-2922. That's 255-2922. It's time to experience a pain relief, wellness, and anti-aging treatment unlike any other. It's time to check out MEND Cryotherapy. Relieve chronic joint and muscle pain, diminish soreness and inflammation, alleviate stress-related symptoms, boost immune system performance, and improve sleep and recovery times. MEND Cryotherapy is open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go to MEND, M-E-N-D, cryotherapy.com. Right now, as you're listening to this, the last thing on your mind is needing a plumber. Whitaker Plumbing understands. That's why we want you to store this in the for later use file in your brain. Whitaker Plumbing will handle all emergencies. Your toilet won't stop running? Call Whitaker. Your sink is dripping? Call Whitaker. Your garbage disposal sounds funky? Whitaker will handle it. Upgrading your water heater? All your plumbing services with one call. Whitaker Plumbing. Whitaker with one T. Plumbing. SCV.com. In these challenging times with virus attacking, I built my immune system with IV therapy at Hestia Medical Spa. I'm KHTS owner Jerry Sreddy Goldman. My husband Carl and I believe Hestia's Medical Spa IV therapy has been a powerful addition for strengthening our immune system. I've been using an IV combination of vitamins and minerals to help me fight off COVID and other viruses. Boost your energy and immune system with IV therapy at Hestia Med Spa in Valencia. Details at HestiaMedicalSpa.com. There's something for everyone at the Paseo Club. A dozen full-size tennis courts, a junior Olympic-sized outdoor pool, and a full fitness center with over 60 classes a week. Don't forget everyone's favorite game, pickleball. The Paseo Club offers 11 courts to choose from. Make forever friendships while enjoying your healthy, connected life. There's even a kids' club for children 3 months, 12 years, where your little ones can grow, play, and learn. The Paseo Club on Dickinson Drive in Valencia. For more information and to schedule a tour, go to thepaseoclub.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and ILEAD Schools Eye on the Valley. 
This morning, we're joined by Amanda Fisher, Executive Director of ILEAD California Charter Schools, serving as CVI and all six ILEAD schools here in Southern California. And we're talking about the kickoff of the new school year. So, Amanda, we mentioned before, we talked about the support that, that you and your team provide for our six schools because it, it is a bit different from a school district, right? Each of our schools is independently run and operated. As And as part of this support, we provide, um, well, a big part, it was the reason we kind of took that hiatus in the summer, uh, we provide two full weeks of professional development prior to the start of the school year, which is one of the reasons we start a little bit later than some of the local schools. Um, and so I think you and your team just wrapped that up. How did, how did that go this year? What does that look like? And then um, what came out of that this year? Uh, so we have an entire maker team, actually Matt is part of that maker team, that focus on professional learning for our staff, which is amazing. I've never seen so much professional learning and support for staff as when I came to iLead. So the first thing that happens is for our new facilitators, they get three full days of support. And so we take them through who we are, what our culture is, what it's like, and really just provide them a person to connect with and love mm -hmm. on so that they feel they're not alone in this new yeah. world. And then after that, then our the rest of our staff comes back. So on the first Monday, we do a huge kickoff. This year it was a happy new year theme and welcoming everybody back with a great big party and a great keynote speaker. And then after we do that, then we start really digging in to uh -huh. the cornerstones of our program. So our teacher, our, our facilitators and staff received five full days of training on project-based learning, social emotional learning, mm -hmm. the cornerstones of who we are, our English language arts program, backwards planning, looking at standards, math, right. you name it, we did it. It was great to dig in, and then I think one of the things they really enjoyed this year is that in the afternoon, so that's morning, and then in the afternoon, they actually got the time to take the, the information that they just acquired and apply it and start building all mm. of their lessons and their projects and all the things so that they're ready to go back and implement in the classroom. And then this week, they're actually with their sites doing the same kind of thing. So team building and professional development, but at their own site, working with their team to put all those things into place. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, we, we really do go deep. It's, it's a lot, it's intense. Um, but it's funny, I just spoke with a friend of mine who works in that that large district downtown, and I was asking her, you know, how's it going? Are you back in? She's, no, we're doing our two days of, of professional development, and the word that she used was time warp. You know, they shoved us all in an auditorium for two days to watch videos, mm. a and, then, and then that was it. Um, and then this year, uh, that training that we've done, well, really since we opened our, our school network, uh, what, 15 years ago now, um, it expanded, and, and we offered training not only to uh, the the teachers or facilitators, but to other groups as well. So what was your favorite part of, of that and what we expanded this year? So what a, one of my favorite pieces is I think that sometimes we forget what we – our principals we call directors because their job is really way bigger than um, just overseeing the school because, as Matt said, they have their independent board. They're like a mini superintendent is what they are. Okay. So our directors really – they they had been there to support their facilitators, but I didn't feel like we were doing a great job in the very beginning setting them up. And so mm -hmm. this year, one of the additions we added is we did a full five days training with our directors. And this started with goal setting, looking at a deep dive into our data. What, you know, what do we need to accomplish? And this doesn't mean just testing data. It means everything from demographics to college career readiness to, but just digging our social emotional learning because we do mm -hmm. um, track that data. It is based on Character Lab. There are actual, there are ways to look at um, the social emotional outcomes. So looking at all of our data and then our directors created goals around those that they then have taken back to their sites and said, hey, these are our goals for the year. Then we broke those down into what are we going to accomplish in the first 60 days of school and we looked at our finances and we looked at how does our professional mm -hmm. learning calendar match our actual goals. So I am so excited for the start of this school year. I feel like we're really focused. We have a great, we know where we're going. We're headed that direction. And um Everyone is just excited. It's a great year to be back, and we're we're just motivated, and um, 
enthusiastic about being back with our learners and really focusing on them. Yeah. I, I think it worked out great the way you and your team were so intentional about setting that stage for the, the school directors as well. And it was funny. I remember um, – kind of seeing their faces. I've been a school director and I, I know what it feels like, sure. right? And so oftentimes you and I will look at them and be like, you know, I know what you're thinking. At the beginning of that week, it was like, okay, we're going to have a week of all day meetings and when I should be getting ready for the school year, which is kind of a misnomer because then it was funny. Then we started hearing at the end of that week, I really appreciate how well my year is laid out in front of me. Yes. I feel prepared to start now. And yeah, it was funny. I think they kind of just intended to do that on their own. But again, life gets in the way. That phone call, that email, and it just seems like you're never ready for the school year. They feel ready this year. Yeah, and it's with intention, right? Yeah. We, we absolutely set intention. So we didn't just put a calendar together because we had to. We put a calendar together focused on what are our goals and what are the big things we want to accomplish. When we started looking at professional learning or our parent um, universities we're going to do, it's all based on the goals that each of those schools have set. So, yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was a lot. And I think you're right at first. They're like, oh, what are you doing to us, Amanda? Another five days of training? <laughs> Come on. But I think in the end, they found that they're so grateful to have the whole year kind of laid out in front of them with a plan in place. Um, I Just thinking a little bit, last year, you know, we were just coming back from COVID. Yeah. And I feel like we were so sucked into masking up. No, take the mask off. Oh, we have to take that, you know, t yeah. test. Oh, you're vaccinated. Load your vaccination. But there was all this going on that the focus – we got away from us. And so it's nice to come back this year and be back just set and focused on kids. So I'm, I, that is probably the most exciting part for me. Yes, I know there's still COVID. Yes, I know we occasionally have to, ma we can talk about that. Well, yeah. But <laughs> I'm grateful to be completely back focused on kids. It's a great point. Everything was new last year. And, and I almost felt like, you know, we were still, trying to figure it out as a society. You know, the Department of Health, the county, the state, everybody was trying to figure this out. And, um, you know, and, and nobody wants kids or teachers to get sick. And um, But you mentioned it. So um, I did read in the news recently that, uh, that the Department of Public Health decided they weren't going to mandate masks. So, so what's going on? Are kids wearing masks to school? Or uh, you said COVID's still a thing, and I know you've got some steps you need to follow. Where are we at right now in schools? So at where we are at as of today, because <laughs> it does change very regularly. Good I, point. I feel like this is my, um, yes, this is a lot. So every week we listen to calls and we get all the latest and the greatest. So as of today, um, you do not have to mask up to go to school. Unless you are a close contact, and a close contact is defined as you are in the same airspace as somebody else for 15 minutes cumulative. And if you are, you will get a notice home from us saying you are a close contact. And with that being said, you do have to mask up for 10 days. You also are uh, need to take a test between day three and five to make sure that you remain negative, and then you take a test again between day six and ten. So there are still some requirements um, if you are a, a close contact, mm -hmm. but as far as going to school on a daily basis, you do not have to mask up. Okay. The other change is vaccine. I, well, I think everybody thought so. You have to load if you're vaccinated. So for our employees, that mm -hmm. if you are not vaccinated, you do still need to take a test weekly. Okay. Those are the, those are what's still in place. Okay. I and it's real. My kids are, I have a high schooler, and she's already gotten two letters. She's already been in close contact twice at one of oh the local gosh. school districts. But oh boy. So she has to wear a mask. And I tell her, okay. oh, well, if you want to go to school, you mask up. And she's been just fine with it. <laughs> Well, that's good. It, it, it can be difficult. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is for now. I like that it's at least moving in the direction of more common sense and that, uh, sure, um, let me go backwards. Kind of third, we want to make sure that, that nobody else gets sick if, if you're sick. But second, we want to make sure that you're healthy. And so if you've been in close contact, we want to make sure you test a couple times to make sure that you don't get sick. But primarily, it seems like the focus is going back in the direction of let's get kids in school comfortable yes. to where they can focus on learning and, and, and we're not 
living in this state of, of panic because that's where a lot of this trauma came from is just being high alert, right? We all know Absolutely. that, uh, you know, when something happens, that's what adrenaline is for, but it's intended for the short term. We, mm. we can't be high alert, high adrenaline for three years. It's, yeah. it's, it's killing us. And like you just said, like getting kids back to school, right? Like we, we want you to be there. You learn best w- if that's the method you choose. Let me say that again. <laughs> if Good you point. choose a seat-based school, we know that that is the best way probably for your child to learn. We want you to be there. So I am so grateful that now, you know, close contacts don't have to stay home. And for those that learn in a different model, they still have that option as well. Awesome. Amanda Fisher is the executive director of iLead California. She's here with us this morning serving SCBI and and iLead schools across Southern California. We'll continue our conversation when we get back. I am Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCBI and iLead schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Accidents happen, but rest assured Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California-certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit PattersonsCollisionCenter.com or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Helping lead the way to a greener future, all of Burtech's Santa Clarita Valley waste collection trucks run on clean, burning natural gas. Burtech takes pride in their community, and they've been serving the SCV for nearly two decades. Because at Burtech, we'll take care of it. You already know Salt Creek Grill has the best food in our valley. Well, now you can have Salt Creek's gourmet meals catered to your event. I'm Greg Amser, owner of Salt Creek Grill. I'd like to introduce you to a new level of catering, featuring our catering director, Tamara Levine. Salt Creek Grill creates memorable experiences, which leaves our clients and guests with a sense of awe and excitement. From menu development to picturesque presentation, you'll enjoy culinary excellence and creative catering. Salt Creek Grill, a new level of catering. Dr. Neil Green has been treating Santa Clarita patients and making them smile for over 35 years. As a child, Dr. Green had a fear of the dentist and disliked even simple checkups. Today, he's sensitive to your needs. If you have anxiety about getting a checkup, he understands your apprehension even if you've avoided the dentist for years. Discover the comfort of visiting a dentist with Dr. Neil Green. Dentistry is his profession. People are his focus. Neil Green at DDS.com. That's Neil, N-E-A-L, Green, DDS.com. Many families face a new challenge. Child care has forced one parent out of the workforce. Otter has created a solution. Otter is a child care marketplace that connects Santa Clarita parents who need child care with stay-at-home parents who can care for your kids alongside their own. Otter unlocks the ability for those parents to earn money and provide badly needed child care for our valley. Otter connects you with your neighbors. Register for free at withotter.com. Withotter.com. Otter, child care that feels like family. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCBI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. And I am joined this morning by Amanda Fisher. She is the executive director of I Lead Schools California, a network of charter schools across Southern California here. Amanda, we've been talking this morning, and we've talked, and, and it's right that we focus on our educators. We just spent two weeks focusing on them. And we've been bouncing a little bit. We've been calling them facilitators. We've been calling them teachers. And I had somebody shake their finger in my face one day. And she says, I know what you do at charter schools. You call them facilitators because they're not really teachers. They don't have credentials, do they? They have credentials. (laughs) (laughs) They have to have credentials. So why don't you call them teachers? Because we don't want them to stand up and do direct instruction all day long. We want them to facilitate learning. And as you heard us say, our students are learners. 
because they are part of the process of learning. It is an interactive process of engagement that teaches. So that is why. So our facilitators are helping to facilitate the knowledge to build inside of our learners who are like actively it. engaged. I like it. So still highly qualified educators. We just shift the vocabulary as the starting point of helping us shift the mindset. So we're not uh, we're not looking to hire Charlie Brown's teacher, the no. the one that sits in front of the room and want 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 right. Um, but I know. Schools around the country are all looking to hire. Are, are, are y'all hiring? Because it's a great place to work. We are. We continue to be looking for great facilitators. So if you've ever been interested in teaching, um, please reach out to us. There's lots of ways you can reach out. We have postings on a website called ysayers.com. You can also reach out through EdJoin, Indeed. But we're here to support you. So if you've thought about it and you're like, I don't really know how to get into it. My degree is in this or, you know, I just like to be in a classroom and see what that's like. We're here to support you. We want people who love kids and um, reach out to us because we do have a few positions still open in some of our schools. Yeah. One of the things that I just absolutely fell in love with is that in charter schools, we have that that freedom and autonomy to do what we know is right by kids. I said I, I, I joined SCBI, well, this is my 12th year, so a little over 11 years ago, um, thinking it was going to be a one-year job, and, and, and I stuck around because it is such an amazing place to work. Um, now, another myth that, that I hear once people finally do say, okay, so you do have credentialed teachers in the classroom – but they're letting kids take charge of their education and kids are learning to be leaders and they're empowered and, and they're going deep and they're getting their hands on their schoolwork. So this is, this is exciting. So how much does it cost? What's, what's the tuition? What's the catch? There's no catch. We are a free public school. So what happens is, and, and I'll give you a little bit of his, what happens with charter schools is someone along the line has said, oh my gosh, I have this awesome idea and this innovative program. And like I talked earlier, they write this huge document and say everything they're going to do in the program from academics to finances to governance, they include <laughs> everything. And then we have to go to a local school district. And we're so lucky here in the Santa Clarita Valley, we're partnered with the William S. Hart School District, but they partner with us. And so it, I think it was 13 years ago that they, they got the original petition from Amber Raskin and um, Golden. And she was the one who came up with this beautiful idea and she got the charter petition approved. And then what happens is every five to seven years, we have to go back and prove our worth to the district and say, hey, look, we're making growth with our students and they're being educated and they're comparable to you and they're as good as the state is doing and all, we have to make sure all of our facilitators are credentialed. And so it really is a pretty intense process and there's a lot that goes into being able to be um, renewed every five years, but we have really high standards we have to meet to be able to continue to exist. Well, you talk about accountability. The the typical district school doesn't need to prove their medal scut to butt, top to bottom every five years in order to stay open. So it's it's something that you constantly got to work on. You've got to have a, a quality program to be able to stay open. It's a lot. And yes, we <laughs> do. But it makes me proud, too, because we're in – I we have proven our worth. I mm -hmm. think, you know, we're going into – We've done two renewals already. We're, we're there. Like, we've proven that we do really good things for kids. And it shows up not just in academics. It shows up in their life after they graduate from us. Well, you've got to be doing something right if after 15 years, when you started with 120 kids at one little school, um, to where not year 15, but year two, you were so big you had to change locations. And now you've got six schools, over 6,000 kids you got to be doing something right if families are just knocking down your door to, to, to get their kids in. But so that leads to another question. Okay, so you are a publicly funded school, and so there's no tuition. Families attend for free, just like their, their, their local public school. But does one of your schools have to be in my neighborhood in order for me to attend? Like, who can come to our schools? 
So for our seat-based schools, anybody who's willing to drive to our seat-based schools can attend our schools. And then for our independent study schools, 50% of those that population needs to be from the county. So Los Angeles County is where they're authorized of. But you can also attend if you are in any of the adjacent counties. So Ventura, um, Kern, any uh-huh. of the, the adjacent counties, if you're in one of those and you want to go to our online program or you want to be in our home study program, you also can attend our schools. So it's kind of a, an administrative balancing act for us to make sure we have the right balance. But I'm, I'm thinking about the map of L.A. County. We're talking about if you live in Orange County, San Bernardino County, Kern County, Ventura County, you can attend our uh, independent study schools. And it's, you know, honestly, I don't think anybody's going to drive from Orange County up to our school in Santa Clarita to attend the seat base. But that, that school campus is just a few miles from Ventura County. We do have quite a few families that drive in from uh, from the Fillmore area or even as far west as, as Oxnard and, and Ventura. And, and families who come up from the San Fernando Valley as well. Yeah, and yeah. so we have both. And so if you work locally and you're looking for, in, you want, I mean, there's the industrial center over there in Cast Aiken. So if you're interested in coming and seeing the school because you'd rather have your child close to you, even though you may live in the San Fernando mm-hmm. or Ventura County, it's an awesome opportunity. So we get those. Or families coming down the five as well yeah. that want um, a school closer in Santa Clarita. Yeah. So – so our school year starts a little bit later, as I mentioned. It doesn't start until Tuesday, and I know somebody that's listening, their kids have probably been in school for maybe a week or so, and if even if they've already started at the local district, kids can still enroll, and if so, what's what's the process? If a family's thinking, you know what, it's been a week, and, and, and I'm not comfortable where my kid's at, I might want to take a look, how would they start the process of, of getting enrolled? So absolutely. So we... We're open enrollment, and so you can go to, um, I think you said, iLead Schools and look uh-huh. at all of our different schools, um, and then go onto their pages, register, say you're interested. We will set up tours, parent, um, so parents can come in, bring your learner with you. We want them to be a part of the process, and come see what we have to offer. So I'm, I'm looking at, uh, at Facebook Live because we're streaming on Facebook and producer Sarah's dropping the links to our different websites in, in the chat here. Um, but uh, it's basically if you know the school that you want to attend, you can go to the school's website. It's pretty easy. I lead aguadulce.org I lead, or SCVI, um, you know, what have you. Or you can just go, like you said, ileadschools.org. Find the school that you're interested in. Click on Enroll Now. It'll walk you through the process. It's it's actually really simple. Um, and so that's uh, that's all you need to do. Go to iLeadSchools.org and click on the button on the top that says Our Schools. Amanda, thank you so much for, for joining me this morning. I really enjoyed talking with you um, just because you kind of have that, that overarching uh, broad panorama view of our schools. It's going to be a great school year. You have a wonderful one. It's going to be a great one. year. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCDI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Hi, I'm Miles McNamara, Certified Senior Advisor and Owner of Comfort Keepers and Home Care. Our caregivers help you in your own home. A Comfort Keeper can provide companionship, meal preparation, medication monitoring, assistance with personal care, transportation to doctor appointments, all enhancing your independence and safety in the comfort and privacy of your own home. So if you or someone you love could use a helping hand at home, call Comfort Keepers at 287-4200. That's 287-4200. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. 
Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Celebrate summer with Dunkin' Lemonade Refreshers. Try the Strawberry Dragon Fruit, Peach Passion, or the Mango Pineapple. Don't forget to grab a bite to eat. How about the Tomato Pesto Grilled Cheese, Roasted Tomatoes Pesto Spread, and White Cheddar on Sourdough. Order ahead with the Dunkin' app and accumulate points. Located on Bokeh Canyon in the Lowe's Shopping Center and on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country. Both with curbside pickup or use the drive through at Sierra Highway. Santa Clarita runs on Dunkin'. Hey, Ned, what are you doing with that calculator? The customer said they don't have the money for a new system right now, and their old AC system has had it. Eh, it's too bad we can't help them. Yes, we can. Pacific Air now has special financing. Zero payments and zero interest for a year. I mean, we'll help people stay cool in Simi Valley, Ojai, Fillmore, and all over Ventura County. Aren't you supposed to tell me to get in the truck? Nope. Let's go tell the customer the good news. Mark and Kaylee for Pacific Air. Maybe Ned needs to switch to decaf. But everyone at Pacific Air is excited about our new financing options. If you're a homeowner that's a little strapped for cash, finding money to replace a broken HVAC system can be difficult. Not anymore. Introducing Pack Air's new zero payments and zero interest for a year on any new HVAC system. No surprises, just exceptional service. Because nobody cares like Pacific Air. We think you'll say, Wow! Call Pacific Air. Learn more about our new financing options today at packair.com. Welcome to the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, where life changing moments happen daily. Set out on safari and discover 1,800 acres of sprawling savannas teeming with wildlife, as well as world class botanical gardens. There's no place like it on Earth. Encounter rhinos, Ooh. giraffes, wildebeest, and large herds of wildlife roaming together. Journey through the bamboo forests and come face to face with Sumatran tigers. Hop alongside kangaroos and dive underwater to meet the only two platypuses outside of Australia and experience the awe-inspiring giants of Elephant Valley. When you're here, you'll discover adventure is in every moment and a moment can change a lifetime. For your family's ticket to fun, visit San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance.org. That's San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance.org. Summer safety tips from Susan Owen, managing partner and personal injury law firm Owen Patterson and Owen. When kids are out of school, there's so much more activity and so much more opportunity for accidents. The number of times that I have seen a near tragedy unfold because someone wasn't watching their child. When my kids were little, my neighbors would laugh and call me the safety police. Better safe than sorry. If you've been injured in any way, call 888-OPO-WINS or go to opolaw.com. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 9 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. This is a Fox News alert. Sentencing day for a terrorist on Lisa Brady. He's the highest profile ISIS fighter to stand trial in the U.S. and the last of four known as the ISIS Beatles. El Shafi El Sheikh just sentenced to life in prison in federal court in Virginia eight years to the day after American journalist James Foley was beheaded on video in Syria. He was also found guilty at his trial in April for the involvement in the kidnapping, torture, and murder of journalist Stephen Sotloff and humanitarian aid workers Peter Kassig and young Kayla Muller of Arizona, who was taken hostage and handed over to ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Their bodies never found. The hostages dubbed these four ISIS captors the Beatles because of their British accents. Fox's Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon, Muller's family and Foley's mother among those in the courtroom today. An extradition agreement between the U.S. and Britain took the death penalty off the table in exchange for crucial evidence. Abortion stays legal in Michigan. A judge just blocking county prosecutors from enforcing a 1931 ban on abortion, at least for now, ahead of possible action by the Michigan Supreme Court or voters this fall. Two weeks after the shutdown of North Dakota's only abortion clinic, the clinic's lawyers are asking a judge there to delay the start of a state law banning abortion, which is set to take effect next week, another so-called trigger law after the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe versus Wade. New York City schools rolling out a new program for the immigrant families being bused in by Texas. It is vital that these families feel welcome here in our country and in our city. And they are welcome here 
in New York City. Schools Chancellor David Banks says Project Open Arms will help with enrollment and transition. He's also appealing for federal help and again criticizing the Texas governor who says he's trying to help his own border communities. America's listening to Fox News. Dak Prescott here. Why do I choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number? Because better sleep elevates my game. Only my Sleep Number 360 smart bed helps me fall asleep faster, keeps me cool, and effortlessly adjusts for my best sleep. The result? 28 minutes more restful sleep a night. That's more focus, more edge, and more highlights. And that means more wins for all of us. Save 50% on the Sleep Number 360 limited edition smart bed plus free delivery when you add a base. Ends Monday. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. Sleep Number, the official sleep and wellness partner of the NFL. Every search you make, every click you take, they'll be watching you. Are you tired of being tracked online? There's a simple solution. DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more. All for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with the push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. It's the defense's turn today after the prosecution's star witness took the stand at R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago. A 37-year-old woman known as Jane at trial in federal court in Chicago will be questioned by R. Kelly's attorneys after testifying Thursday that Kelly sexually abused her hundreds of times, starting when she was 14. Kelly's already serving a 30-year prison sentence for his conviction on similar charges in New York. Among the most serious counts in the latest trial, conspiracy to obstruct justice by allegedly rigging a 2008 trial on state child pornography charges stemming from a purported sex tape video of him and Jane when she was underage. Jeff Manasso. Fox News. Federal health officials confirming that a rare infection from a brain-eating amoeba is what killed a child who'd been swimming in a river near Omaha, Nebraska. It's the second death from the same infection this summer in the Midwest. The CDC says the U.S. only has about three cases of the infection reported each year. Two more swimmers survived shark attacks at South Carolina's popular Myrtle Beach, both bitten on the same day, a half mile apart. One woman from Pittsburgh needed hundreds of stitches after she was bitten in the forearm in waist-deep water. The other was a more glancing bite to the leg. And if it seems like shark bites are up this year, you be the judge. The international shark attack file at Florida Museum says last year 47 shark bites off U.S. waters. This year so far already 34. Tracking sharks.com counts 19 off Florida, 2 California, 6 New York, 5 South Carolina, 0 Hawaii, 2 provoked, and 0 fatal. More than half were surfers, 30% wading or swimming. Therese Crowley, Fox News. Stocks are sliding. The Dow's down 284. The S&P and the NASDAQ dropping more than 1%. And Lisa Brady, Fox News. I'm Liz Clayman, and this is the Fox Business Report. Stocks have been under pressure with renewed uncertainty about how much the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates at its September meeting and after. Bed Bath & Beyond shares have slumped below the $12 mark after billionaire investor Ryan Cohen sold his entire stake in the company. Investors are optimistic about Foot Locker's upbeat quarter and its new CEO Mary Dillon, formerly of Ulta Beauty. Foot Locker shares rose 23% in early trading. Deer & Company shares are losing ground. Though its earnings were higher in the recent quarter, it was dealing with higher costs and production issues. Deere says its employees made an extraordinary effort to increase factory output and get products to customers under challenging circumstances. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Cosola, invested in you. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220. Canyon Country, California. K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. Do you suffer from peripheral neuropathy in your hands or feet? 
One drug after another, continuing numbness, tingling, burning pain, balance problems, decreased quality of life? Are you experimenting with drugs like Lyrica, Neurontin, Gabapentin, Cymbalta, with limited success and your doctor telling you you just have to live with it? My name is Dr. Thomas Pilecki, DC, host of Get Better with Dr. Pilecki and founder of Neuropathy Dr. X. I'm here to tell you that there is now a non-invasive natural solution to your neuropathy right here in Santa Clarita. A solution that addresses the underlying causes and we're proud to say that we have an 87 to 97 percent success rate with neuropathy sufferers in getting their lives back. I'd like to invite you to our next seminar when we'll teach you how to reverse this deadly condition that affects over 50 million Americans today. To reserve your spot now call 753-9340. This is a free seminar but seating is limited so call 753-9340 now. Right now, as you're listening to this, the last thing on your mind is needing a plumber. Whitaker Plumbing understands. That's why we want you to store this in the for later use file in your brain. Whitaker Plumbing will handle all emergencies. Your toilet won't stop running? Call Whitaker. Your sink is dripping? Call Whitaker. Your garbage disposal sounds funky? Whitaker will handle it. Upgrading your water heater? All your plumbing services with one call. Whitaker Plumbing. Whitaker with one T. Plumbing. SCV.com. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies as well as board certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. For more information call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. Your hometown station. Life takes us in different directions sometimes, and we may not always have computer access for breaking news. KHTS has a solution. Text alerts. Breaking news you need to know about fast. Freeway closed? We'll text you directly. Emergency police activity in the Santa Clarita Valley? We'll text you. Sign up now for text alerts at hometownstation.com. KHTS has your back. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. Really excited about my next two guests joining me now. Uh, he is the Arts and Events Supervisor, although we were talking, we're trying to figure out which one. Is it Arts Supervisor? Is it Events Supervisor? Is it both? You know what? If there's work to be done here in the city, Jeff is doing it. He is also the manager of the main theater here on, well, Main Street, which is the theater space uh, that the city operates right here in downtown Newhall, just up the block from KHTS Studios, by the way. Jeff Barber is, he's well, he's a SoCal native, raised uh, just around the corner in Simi Valley. He, he's a fourth, check this out, fourth generation drummer who, um, maybe we'll have time to get to this, he's just got the coolest nickname in the world. And then we're also joined, well, let me say hello. Jeff, good morning. Thanks for joining us again here at Eye on the Valley. Morning. I'm glad to have you back. Um, and then we're joined on the phone by someone that's actually going to be performing at the main here pretty soon, Rich Tayback. He is the leader of the band Monkey Bump. How you doing, Rich? Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Jeff. Hi. <laughs> coolest name of a, uh, for a band monkey bump um oh, it, it, we'll get into that in, in just a little bit but i kind of want to set the stage um uh, for our listeners um so jeff tell us a little bit about uh, first of all your job what you what you do um do you do you have an elevator speech because because people say you know if you can't describe what you do for a living in, in in less than one sentence then you're probably doing too much so as the arts and events supervisor what does your role entail here in the city well, I uh, develop events at the main as well as I kind of serve as liaison between the main and 
theater productions. Okay. We're really the house. We don't produce our own plays. We produce music events or comedy shows or um, other types of events. But uh, for the production side of plays, uh, I'm the liaison between the productions and the city, uh, developing the agreements, working on uh, rehearsal schedules, uh, performance schedules, uh, and then the staff, that the house managers that uh, support those productions when they're uh, in, in our house. So I'm guessing it sounds like most of what you do has to do with, with the theater here, the, the main, but then you've also got, a, I think, a team that you work with that organizes because we really do provide a lot of arts and events. There's always something, if not three or four somethings, going on in and around town, especially as we hit the summertime and the weekends and, and things like that. So you stay busy, don't you? Definitely. Arts and Events is uh, doing all sorts of things. I was speaking with one of our coordinators yesterday at Senses. We had our street party yesterday. Yeah. And uh, we're thinking, man, there's just no downtime. And we weren't complaining. We were just, you know, talking about just how many things we're doing um, at the main and uh, through the Arts and Events, whether it be concerts in the park mm -hmm. or the Senses or a variety of other things. So we're uh, constantly constantly busy but it's it's fun we love it yeah it's uh one of those things that uh everybody comes to to santa clarita for uh one of several different reasons but i think one of the reasons that people stay and really are are happiest are all the different arts and events that that we have going on in and nice. around town i live just across the street from uh from central park and and man every saturday in the summertime that the entire city just floods that place and 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 people Indeed. love those events so much so now let's get back to the main. Um, describe the the venue a little bit. First of all, how did the city come to own and operate its own theater? And then um, what kind of shows go on? And, and uh, what's the theater like for folks who've never been there? Sure. So I think it's been about seven years that the city's uh, taken over that space. The theater company that was there um, was folding and leaving the space. And city leadership did not want... Uh, a void of uh, a theater space, you know, lose that space mm -hmm. in the arts and entertainment district, which Old Town New Hall is that. Um, so we really came on board. The uh, city council was on board with uh, coming up with the money for staffing and renting the space and the utilities and all those other things. So we rent the space. I think we've been doing that for about six, seven years now. Okay. And, um, uh, yeah, there, we're there for another few years, and uh, hopefully we'll get that extension and keep on going with the space. Yeah, and as, as a charter school operator, I understand how that works. It's, it's tough for a small organization um, to, to kind of maintain something like that year-round, um, but a, a city like ours with the connections that we have and, and, uh, and the multiple opportunities to, to get different events and, and things like that into a venue like that can can do so a little bit more easily. Um, go ahead. Yeah, we're certainly not constrained by, oh, uh, we have to make enough to support all of the, you know, the rent and the sure. utilities and all that. We have a specific budget, and um, again, it doesn't cover all costs, but that's, again, the luxury of being with the city. Um, we see it as a, a service to the community and um, providing entertainment and and uh, whether it be the art exhibits that we have there monthly um, or the plays or the music programs. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about that. You mentioned I didn't realize you had art exhibits there. So what are the different – because you offer a lot of programming at the main. It, it's not just live theater, although you do that. Um, what's the programming, and, and where do those acts or um, uh, offerings come from? Sure. So uh, 10 by 10 is one I've been doing – even before the uh, other theater group left um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the theater, um, we were um, first Thursday of each month. It's called 10 by 10. It's a variety show. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been curating that for, uh, gosh, about nine years now. And uh, it's everything from music to comedy, improv, uh, magic, storytelling. So it's in Very essence, cool. uh, it's sort of a vaudeville show, really. We call it Variety Night, but mm -hmm. um, I was doing some research on vaudeville about a week ago, and I, I was thinking, the 10, 10 by 10s of Vaudeville show, really? Okay. So uh, anyway, so we do that. Um, we have our locals only, which we'll be talking more about later in the show, I hope. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's our music series um, that's uh, every other month. Um, we have the uh, society improv group that comes in and also punchlines at the main. So we have comedy, there's music, there's the variety show, then there's the productions that we have, um, and 
every month we have a play in there, whether it's an original that's uh, written by one of the, the uh, producers um, or it's a, a classic and they buy the licensing rights and, and they'll do them. And uh, we have a variety of, of types of plays at the main and uh, again, a variety of events too. So what I love about the 10 by 10, it really is something for, for everybody. And so, you know, oftentimes, you know, couples will have different taste in entertainment and, and then the kids have their own thing. And, and that 10 by 10 is, is really something for everybody, something to, something to catch everybody's attention. Definitely. My spiel at the beginning of the show is uh, if you don't like what's on stage, it's gone in 10 minutes. <laughs> so you can go to the bar, get a beverage <laughs> or go to the restroom, whatever, smoke and then come back and, uh, you know, but uh, most people stay for everything. But that's kind of a fun spiel. If you don't like what's on stage, it's gone in 10 minutes. Yeah, right, right. It's it's like the weather in some places, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then... Um, Gosh, you've got live theater, whether it's and, – and did you say once a month you change the, the live theater show? Yes, yeah. Um, and sometimes in a month we'll have two productions. Sometimes we'll have a okay. two-weekend production and then a one-weekend production. Um, a lot of them this, this year are three weekends. Next year there's quite a few that are two and one um, rather than three. It's hard to sustain a, a three-week run of something. Um, sure. So we're, we, we're going back down to two and one for next year. But uh, we're constantly, yeah, again, hearkening back to that conversation yesterday at Census, just the busyness, how, mu how much we're doing. Um, yeah, when someone calls to maybe rent the space, which it's rentable um, at reasonable oh. rates. However, there's no, sp <laughs> there's no like, dates open, really. So <laughs> okay, I can give you a Wednesday at, you know, noon. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that doesn't work for our bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny, um, but yeah, and, and similar to the ten by ten, like you know, if you're looking at at, at the the play that's that's there right now, and it doesn't necessarily tickle your fancy, well, just look back in a couple of weeks, and yep. and there will be another. It's not like you're doing a, a sixteen week run where no, yeah, the the whole season is uh, is taken up by the same show. So speaking of which, how do folks um, uh, get a look at everything that's going on and and see? you know, some some great family entertainment, great date night or, or something like that. Where do they get information? Uh, at themain.org is our website. Um, there's the list of plays there. You can always drop by, too, and, and get a brochure for the season. Um, and, uh, again, there's just a lot going on. Uh, again, we talked about the exhibits. Every month we have a new exhibit. Sometime, most of them are solo shows, but we do have group shows. And then we couple the artist reception with the census night. Mm -hmm. And uh, so okay. we had 243 oh, yeah. people at the reception last night for the artist uh, Daryl Bibikoff, who's in there right now. Great idea. Wow. And, and so, gosh, so you've got arts, you've got theater, comedy, entertainment, and, and live music. You, you mentioned that before. Um, you've got a, a program called Locals Only. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the Locals Only program. So uh, one of uh, the house managers, Sean Hughes, um, who is a um, – he's been with us for – Good many years, and uh, he's a musician, mm -hmm. and I'm a musician as well, and um, we both kind of were talking, uh, gosh, maybe uh, a year ago about the fact that there's, and we've talked about this before, that there's not a lot of places in Santa Clarita to play live music, Right. unfortunately, um, and so we thought, well, we can, th we have an 81-seat theater, um, and we could maybe do something, and so then the idea of, of uh having a series of, for bands that are in Santa Clarina, mm -hmm. Florida. And there's over 100 bands in Santa Clarita and all manner of wow. genres as well. So we're trying to provide, uh, you know, those evenings um, of music for folks and uh, opportunities for the bands as well. And we, we break them up into different genres. So we've had indie rock and alt rock. And um, in November, there'll be a jazz show. And then September is the sing-along version of Locals Only. Oh, cool. Very cool. And and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the leaders of, of one of the bands that's going to be playing at Locals Only is is here with us uh, on the phone, Rich Tayback uh, from Monkey Bump. Uh, Rich, uh, so when are you going to be playing at, at, at Locals Only? Is that uh, coming up soon? September 2nd. We go on at 8.15. Jeff, I think the first band, what, 7 o'clock goes on? 7 o'clock, yeah. Okay. 7 so o'clock, yeah. So... Is it like about a two-hour show, kind of seven to nine, or, or does it go, okay. Yeah, two hours. All right, so about seven to nine, and, and, and Rich, your band Monkey Bump goes on at about 8.15 on, on September 2nd. That's, uh, that's just a couple of weeks away. 
Hey, Rich, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, what that, that crowd, uh, that really intimate crowd, 81 seats? 81. Crazy. That, what a great place to see a concert. Rich, I want to talk about what your crowd can expect from you that night, um, but we do need to take a quick break. Um, so we'll be right back, and, and Rich, we'll, we'll give you a chance to, to dive into it. Um, uh, again, band, uh, band leader Rich Tayback with Monkey Bump and Jeff Barber, manager of the Maine, will be right back after this. I am Matt Watson. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. SCVI is a tuition-free TK-12 through charter school that gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely. We offer a customized learning program built around your child's unique interests and strengths with the only international baccalaureate program in all of Santa Clarita. Our approach keeps students and families in step no matter where your learning is taking place. Be empowered to make your mark on the world at SCVI. To take a tour or enroll now in our one-of-a-kind program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. I Lead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. It's time to enhance your natural beauty at Hestia Medical Spa. Select from a large menu of services, including an assortment of fillers that can be used in the face, lips, hands, and a variety of other body parts. Get rid of that double chin with Kybella, an injectable treatment to permanently destroy fat cells under the chin. Hestia Medical Spa also offers Botox, Dyspor, and Xeomin to help reduce severe frown lines. Experience rejuvenation at Hestia Medical Spa. Call 753-3434 or go online to HestiaMedicalSpa.com. Moms, dads, this is Cardin Ellis, owner of Unipest. If your house has ants, spiders, or gophers, or you want a free orange oil termite inspection, you have to call Unipest Termite and Pest Control, Santa Clarita's only factory certified orange oil pest control company. We specialize in organic, low impact, and traditional pest control options that are all kid friendly, pet friendly, and affordable with no contracts, and we're SCV owned and operated. Call us at 661 Bug 7575 or visit unipest.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and I'm joined this morning by manager of the Maine, the theater here in downtown Newhall, Jeff Barber. And uh, we're also joined by Rich Tayback. He is the leader of the band Monkey Bump. Monkey Bump is going to be playing here at the Maine at the Locals Only event on the evening of September 2nd. So, so Rich, I've got a lot of things I need to know. First of all, tell me about the band name. That, that <laughs> Really cool name. It, I, I don't know that you can say it without giggling. Um, where does the name of the band Monkey Bump come from? It, it's, an, it's an odd thing. Actually, we were searching for band names. This was, uh, geez, about 12 years ago. And the drummer was giving his son like little noogies, you know, where you, you point yeah. your, your uh, finger out and you just sort of poke them. A, a knuckle into the top of the head. Bumps. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He called them monkey bumps, and we all looked at him, and he goes, that's the name of the band. <laughs> like, uh, all right. Well, and we didn't think it would stick, but uh, it, it turns out, you know, the funny thing is, is we don't often, we don't have any actual band photos. What we do is have photos of monkeys, <laughs> and um, and it, it goes over quite well, actually. <laughs> that is awesome. So, um, what kind of music does does your band play, Rich? It's classic rock, um, anything from the '60s to today. But it's it's got a very specific sort of flavor to it, where it's either danceable, you know, play that funky music sort of stuff, uh -huh. or it's singable. We we sort of discovered that um, you know if the band drops out a little bit, the audience knows all the words, so they sing along. And um, either it's just a chorus that they sing, or sometimes, like a Hotel California, they'll sing all the words at well, the yeah. same time. So it's got that sort of vibe to it. 
Very cool. Very cool. And, and yeah, as as you're mentioning, I'm scrolling through your band's Facebook page, Monkey Bump Music. And, and yeah, there, there's <laughs> video clips of you guys playing and then a bunch of monkeys all over the place. <laughs> I absolutely love it. This is fantastic. So as I mentioned, um, you're going to be playing the, the Locals Only Night on September 2nd here at the main um, and you guys are Monkey Bump. You're you're the main act, but you've also got another band playing. It are they the the, the same genre, or, or are they doing like bluegrass or something like that? Will Call does uh, '60s and '70s. Okay, oh, and they're cool. called Will Call, and right. not sure the story behind that. And uh, so they'll be doing acoustic, and their main thing is is a uh, a three part harmony. And right. they'll be doing some sing-along tunes as well um, with the three-part harmony and from the 60s and 70s. Very cool. So 60s and 70s, Will Call kicks the night off at, mm-hmm. at 7 o'clock. And then about 8.15, Monkey Bump comes in with the classic rock sing-along. And yep. is, uh, is Will Call a sing-along act as well? Is they that... are. Okay. So very cool. The whole night, yeah. So, so now I'm thinking, because I'm a guy that, that, that will set up an evening in my, in my brain, there's tons of great restaurants here in downtown new hall go grab dinner yep. have have a have a glass or bottle of, of wine and then head on into the the sing-along with will call and and, and monkey bump that, that, what a great night what a fantastic night so rich um how often do you guys play here in santa clarita um pre-covid we were playing just about every month i mean there's well, like you said there's not a lot of places to play but um we have some of our favorites, uh, the local breweries. We used to play quite a bit. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I think this is really only our second gig post COVID. Um, oh, wow. And frankly, I'm I'm excited to be at the main. It's it's got that. It, it's a theater, but it's still intimate. It's it's not. It it's the same as if we played at a, a brewery or a local bar. But it, it's much more concentrated on, on the acts. I saw a comedy the other night, mm-hmm. and people are just dialed in. And, and I think that's going to be uh, a, a great advantage to this show. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, you know, the, like you said, the local breweries and a couple other venues around town are fantastic. Great way to, to highlight uh, especially local acts a, a, and things like that. But oftentimes you find yourself smashed between the bar and the and the kitchen, right? Um, but the main has got <laughs> a great place for you to set up and, and, and really spread out and, and, and perform while still having a very intimate, you know, no more than 80 or 81 uh, uh, people in the crowd. That is fantastic. Yeah, it was always funny. We play this place called Pocock's, which we like quite a bit. Um, I know Pocock. Yeah. A little shout out to them. Yeah. Um, you know, but we can, from where we sit, we can see straight across to the bar because it's not a big place. Mm-hmm. And because you know most of the audience after a few years, you know, in between songs, you're asking people, you know, what are they ordering at the bar? And and the bartender will yell back, you know, what their order is. <laughs> you know, it, this is going to be a little bit different, which is nice. I mean, we have to... We have to literally put on a show here as opposed to we're just, you know, interacting with our friends. Yeah, and that's uh, – you bring up an interesting point. So, so it is a little bit different when you're, when you're playing in a, in a brewery or something like that. Um, but you guys do put on a show. So, so what can, can folks expect? Uh, you know, Jeff said that, uh, that it's going to be kind of a sing-along, so I'm assuming you're singing songs that are, are pretty popular and, and typically known. Um, do you guys get – wild and raucous on stage what what do crowds expect when they come to <laughs> to see a monkey bump show well i i do have a wireless uh pack you know um i i can actually walk into the i'm not going to do that but oh. um but maybe you know, a stage no it's it's just a lot of dancing and uh you know the audience screaming back which is something we like so gosh, just a party right there in the main fantastic yeah. So, so Jeff, I'm I'm sure you mentioned there's I didn't realize a hundred over a hundred bands here in Santa Clarita, and so if somebody's listening right now and they're thinking, hey, locals only, I want to get in on that, or or, or maybe I just want to kind of throw my own concert and advertise my own tickets and and do something a little bit different. Um, how can local acts uh, get in at the main? At the main dot org is the best spot. That's our website. All right. Again, that lists all the events coming up. Um, there's an opportunity there to send us an email and say, hey, I'm a 
you know, an act I'm interested in performing, you know, maybe you're a comedian, and you want to perform at 10 by 10, send me an email, um, or a band, same thing. Uh, we have bands that play mini sets at the 10 by 10 as well. So uh, at the main.org is the best spot. Okay, so if you're a performer, uh, again, you mentioned if you're a comedian or if you've got a theater troupe or anything like that, or if you're a local band and want to mm -hmm. get in on locals only, at the main dot org you yes. said at the main dot org and then again if if you're an audience member if you're like me and you appreciate the arts and, and music and things like that at the main dot org is where you can see the schedule where you can get information um you can buy tickets online things like that yes and uh for this show under the events tab you go in there and you'll find the show and then it'll take you to eventbrite to get tickets or twelve dollars um we have sold half the house already so there's oh, wow. about 41 sick uh, seats left. So this isn't something that I would uh, just kind of four o'clock on a Friday get whimsical, and I should probably plan the evening. Probably for <laughs> this, yeah. Uh, the locals only tend to sell out, and uh, so yeah. If you really want to come and sing your heart out uh, with the bands, then uh, get tickets now rather than than waiting. Uh, well, yeah, fantastic, and especially only eighty-one seats. If you've got two or three friends you want to bring along, you better get those tickets now. Yeah. Again, at the main dot org, and, and just one more time, set it up for us. We've got. The locals only, the local bands, um, uh, Monkey Bump, along with Will Call. Will Call playing on September 2nd. But what are some of the other things going on maybe this weekend and next weekend? Sure. Uh, so this weekend we continue the production of Murder on the New Hall Express. And so uh, nice. the production company that uh, has produced this show um, is really creative. They've kind of come up with a murder mystery, and they use characters from the past. Um, I think, is it Velma from uh, Scooby-Doo is uh -huh, in uh -huh. the show, Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> um, Mrs. Marple. So there's kind of this mashup, and okay. it's really great. That's uh, fun. And so that's this weekend, uh, and then they, the next weekend also is their, uh, their final weekend. And then coming up in uh, mid-September is a show called The Real Housewives of Troy. So it's kind of a spoof on... Real Housewives, right. but it's set Ancient in Troy? yes. Oh no way! <laughs> <laughs> so those are the two productions: the one that's current that's awesome. and the one coming up. And then uh, you know the locals only is on September second. And I want, need to give a shout out to Sean Hughes, who is really the curator of that show. He's a house okay. manager for the uh, the main, and he's curating the whole show. He picks the bands and what genre we're going to be doing and all of that. So just want to give a shout out to him. He's a local musician, nice. sound engineer, uh, and uh, he does a great job at the main. Very cool, very cool. Now, now, Jeff, I did mention it in your intro. You, you've got one of the coolest nicknames I've ever heard, especially for a drummer. They they call you Six, right? Yes. A and uh, my girlfriend doesn't. She <laughs> refuses to call me Six, but all my friends do. She call you what? Five and a half? <laughs> <laughs> she refuses to call you Six, but everybody else does. And 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 I think I remember the last time you were in. The way you got that nickname is almost as cool as the the name itself. Can can you reset? I that can do first? a condensed version. So I used to live in Hollywood. Uh, I was up the street um, around the corner from my place. Um, this was gosh, 20 years ago now. Um, and I gave five dollars to a homeless guy outside of the uh, the 7-Eleven. And um, it may have even been ten. It's kind of blurry, but uh, okay. it was a, you know it wasn't like a dollar or something. Um, and that was maybe on a Monday, and then I think Thursday night around 4 in the morning, 3.30, I'm, I'm woken up to something, and I realize there's someone yelling, number six! And uh, <laughs> so once I came to my senses, I'm like, that's my, that's my apartment number. And I look out, and the guy is in this parking lot that was below my apartment, uh -huh. yelling, number six! Number six at 3.30 <laughs> in the morning. So I'm sure all my neighbors thought I was a drug dealer or something. And I was just horrified. And I opened the window. I'm like, can I help you? And I didn't remember this person at all. And he's uh -huh. like, oh, yeah, you were so nice. And I was wondering if, you know, if I could have some. And this is like in the middle of the night. Right. And so he must have followed me home. And then there's security gates. And it went straight up. There was two other uh, apartments. But mine was this one right at the top of the stairs. It's number six. And my life is kind of like an adventure comedy movie, um, <laughs> a lot of stories like that. And my friend at the time, um, he was like, man, that, that stuff does not happen to anyone except for you. <laughs> I'm going to just start calling you number six. And then it got just shortened to six. Shortened to six, right. And I embraced it, so, yeah, for about 20 years now. So cool. Four o'clock in the morning, just calling oh me out gosh. by apartment number. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, yeah, now, Rich, uh, 
back to you really quickly. I know people are, are probably chomping at the bit to, to maybe come see you at the main on September 2nd for the locals only event. Uh, but if, uh, you know, they want to get a taste before they, they get on the website at the main.org to pick up tickets, can, can people go somewhere and, and listen to a sampling of your music, Rich? Um, yeah, well, there's, there's our Facebook page, monkey bump music. All right. And uh, there's a couple during COVID. We did a couple of uh, sort of studio songs. Oh. You know how bands were at home and they yeah. somehow managed to zoom songs together. Sure. So we got uh, two songs on YouTube: "Heroes" um, by Bowie, and then uh, "Maybe I'm Amazed." Oh, cool! Um, you can find those on YouTube. We have a new lead singer. We're very excited about it. Uh, Greg Stewart had just joined the band. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit different than the previous band, but um, we've gelled really together. Okay. So, um, you know, looking forward to getting some video at the main and then subsequent places with uh, with the new singer. And and as you guys continue to blow up, how cool would it be to to be one of those audience members in there as, as you're getting that video. So um, you mentioned the, the Facebook page that I'm looking at is Monkey Bump Music, um, and, and you guys have got a, a couple of videos posted there. And then is it – I'm, I'm imagining if I go to YouTube, I can just search Monkey Bump, or would it be Monkey Bump Music as well to, to see you guys? Uh, just Monkey Bump. All right. If you type in Monkey Bump Heroes or Monkey Bump, uh, maybe I'm amazed it comes up a little faster. All right. All right, very cool. Well, uh, you know, break a leg uh, again. September second, Monkey Bump is going to be uh, the main act out there, uh, along with Will Call at the Main Theater here on Main Street in downtown Newhall, just up the block from the KHTS Studios for the uh, locals only event and and sing along. So, uh, so yeah, come with your friends and, and and be ready to to join in with the band and and sing along with Monkey Bump. Uh, at the main here on uh, Main Street in Newhall. Uh, Rich, I want to thank you for calling in and joining us this morning. And, and like I said, break a leg. Uh, Jeff, thank you for joining us. Although, Jeff, I, I understand that uh, not only are you great at, at bringing high-quality arts and entertainment to the city, but uh, but you're pretty good at, or at least you're, you're pretty good about joining in uh, at, at trivia. My brother's calling in. You want to join us? Yes, I'm probably <laughs> going to get one thing right, but we'll see. Well, that's that's the depending on the subject matter. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, watch this. Let's let's put a little pressure on my brother. He's listening right now. What subject matter do you prefer? Probably, I don't know, theater, music. music? Yeah. History. All right. Hey, Big T, you got about two minutes. Pull pull some music history in there. All right. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and take a break uh, again. Rich, thanks for joining us. Uh, we we appreciate it, and uh, and we'll be back with Big T's. Five Minutes of Fame. This is SCDI and I lead School's Eye in the Valley. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS strives to give the Santa Clarita Valley all the information they need, and when our computers aren't working the way they should, we call Resurgence, your true source for IT. Resurgence provides outstanding customer service while also providing the highest technical ability. They strive to do what's best to improve and protect your business. For more information on Resurgence, call 349-4114 or visit resurgenceit.com. There's a new fine dining restaurant in Santa Clarita, Reyes Winery on Main. Feast in their beautifully designed three-story building. You'll relax and enjoy the views up on Santa Clarita's only patio rooftop wine bar and dining in the center of Old Town Newhall. Experience Reyes Winery on Main's ultra-premium wines while enjoying fresh-caught seafood, premium steaks, or their signature lobster papadadele pasta. The new Reyes patio rooftop wine bar and dining is unlike anything else in our valley. Details at ReyesWineryOnMain.com. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi-Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. A Royal Suite Home Furnishings has been family owned and operated in Santa Clarita since 1978. They keep America working by stocking heritage quality furniture made right here in the USA. 
With high-end design and thousands of fabrics to choose from, a Royal Suite offers a wide selection of furniture at incredibly low prices. Pay 0% interest with your approved credit for 12, 24, 36, or 48 months. See store for details. Visit a Royal Suite's massive showroom on Carl Boyer Drive near Sam's Club in Santa Clarita. A Royal Suite. Sweet dreams. Your hometown station, KHTS. Math is hard, isn't it, Patty? Very for me. <laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCBI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and I'm joined this morning by the manager of the main theater in downtown Newhall, Jeff Barber. And now it is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. Y'all remember Big T. He is a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He's an executive and a philanthropist. He's an amazing father, husband, and community leader. He is also the only person in history to ever plead insanity in traffic court. Here he is. He's mom's favorite, Big T. Welcome to the show. And we're back. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, the one that suffers most, Jeff, when we take that six-week break in the summertime is, is, is my big brother, Big T. <laughs> he needs oh, I, I still do the show. Ask Dad. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <laughs> good to hear from you, Pop. <laughs> Welcome in, Dad. Welcome in, Mom. You know, Mom listens to the show when Tony calls in. Oh, but she's yeah. too busy drinking coffee earlier in the morning. So, anyways... So, so Jeff, I think you've played before, if you remember. Um, I actually have not played before. Oh, you didn't play before. So I'm like... Ah. Oh, gosh. Okay, I, th I thought you played with us before. Okay, so here's the rules. It, it, it's very similar to most trivia shows. Big T will throw out a trivia question. You hit your buzzer to buzz in, and then you'll have the opportunity, the space to answer. Your buzzer is just your name, so call out your name. Uh -huh. You go Jeff. Patty sounds a lot like Matt, so I go by Frogger. So we got Jeff, Patty, and Frogger. And, and so just call out your name. If you're first, <coughs> Big T will recognize you. You give your answer, and I will keep score. We ready to do this, Brother Man? Let's do it. All right. So what city in Spain does the annual running of the Bulls take place? Frogger. Frogger. Pamplona. Pamplona's correct. When completed in 1943, what Virginia office building became the world's largest? Oh, Frogger. Frogger. That'd be the Pentagon. The Pentagon is correct. Yeah, yeah. So David David Vasse, Dodger reporter, injured himself two days ago while sliding down the slide at Brewers Park. <laughs> it's typically an event that the Brewers mascot does exclusively. <laughs> What's the Brewers mascot's name? Ooh. Got a big blonde mustache. Um, Frogger. Frogger. Is it Billy the Brewer? Uh, incorrect. You got the last name right. Uh, uh, I, I know his family. Does he lose points now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he that's should. a good call, Jeff. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> what the? Any, any guesses? No. No. It's a lion, right? It's, it's Bernie the Brewer. Bernie the Brewer. Bernie the Brewer. No, it's a big, weird-looking guy. He's got a big old head and a big blonde mustache. And, um, <laughs> they haven't updated it since 1974. <laughs> <laughs> so... What what three events make up a triathlon? Patty. Patty. Oh, oh. Swimming, running, and biking? That is correct. You were oh. lucky you got that right, Patty, or I'm your other boss would have been mad. Yeah. My other boss. <laughs> oh, that's a total guess, by the way. <laughs> how long how long do runners run in a half marathon? I have no idea. Frogger. Frogger. The whole way. Oh. <laughs> Jeff. Is Jeff. it 15.1 right. miles? Say that one more time. 15.1 miles. Incorrect. Oh. You got anything, Patty? No, not nothing. Okay. I got nothing. What is it, T? 13.1. 13 13 ah. Half the 26.2. I don't run. Sorry, Patty, so. for, the ma <laughs> sorry for the math question, Patty. <laughs> it's fine. I don't, do, I, don't, I don't run marathons, and I never will, so I don't know that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. What year was the – currently we have the Little League World Series going on if you're not watching it, but what year was the first Little League World Series played? Mm, Frogger. Frogger. 
1982. Now, I'll give you other boys a hint. It's their 75th anniversary. Oh, me? That's math. There's some more that math. That is math, so I'm out. I'm out. I'm already out. <laughs> not even going to attempt that. I'm not even going to attempt it either. 1947. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you for doing the math. All right. We may need to sign off early, early gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where is the Little League World Series played? Oh, oh, Patty, Patty. Patty. Oh, Over there. Over, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good pull, Patty. I it's like it. It's a six-week callback. Frogger. <laughs> Williamsport, Frogger. Pennsylvania. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Perfect. I'm turning He's into a, a computer in front of him. <laughs> 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 I'm turning into a Watson, I swear. <laughs> right. Hey, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we had two NBA basketball players that had their numbers retired. Bill Russell by all teams mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Pau Gasol by the Lakers. Okay. Mm -hmm. What were their two numbers re respectively? Ah, I Patty know, for Pau. I only know one. Patty's got Pau. We'll, we'll give you a point for it, Jeff. Throw it out. Six. Six <laughs> Bill Russell's. That is correct. Nice. Yes. And for another point, Pau Gasol. 48. Correct. Anybody else? Uh, Patty, 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 Patty. Patty. 16 for Mr. Pau Gasol. One more time, Patty. 16, 1 6. 16 is correct. Oh, right. Right on. Got a Some more point. numbers at you, Patty. What's the minimum age uh, required to be president of the United States? No idea. Frogger. Frogger. That'd be 35. That is correct. Who's the oldest man ever elected president of the United States? Frogger. Frogger. Joe Biden. That is correct. Oh. And Trump was the oldest man before him. Let's look a little younger on our tickets, folks. Our, our presidents hey, uh, are getting older. Amazing. <laughs> what is 0.25 as a percentage? Math? Frogger. You're giving me math? 25. <laughs> 25%, yes. Yeah, yeah. McCarran Airport serves what U.S. vacation city? Jeff. Las Jeff. Vegas. Oh, yeah. Outstanding. You better know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what futuristic cartoon character was born on July 31st, 2022? Patty? Patty. Is it, I think I know this. Is this George Jetson? You're right. That is George I, Jetson. I saw something. I saw a meme of that recently. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what is the name of the Alaska's annual dog sled race? Patty. Patty. Is it the Iditarod? It is the Iditarod. Hey, yo. Patty. What country swag has an eagle with a snake in its beak? Frogger. Frogger. That's Mexico. That is Mexico, yes. Oh. Uh, what art gets its name from the Japanese word for paper and folding? Jeff. Oh. oh yeah. Jeff. Origami. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice pull. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What country comes last alphabetically in the United Nations after Zambia? Patty? Frogger. Patty. Zimbabwe? That's Frogger. Zimbabwe, yes. Hey, nice oh. Right <laughs> what is the only Ivy League school in New Hampshire? Oh. Frogger. Uh, Patty F. Frogger. Brown. Incorrect. Patty. Anybody else? Yale? Patty. Is it Yale? No. No. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Dartmouth. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Sarah got that one. And she's on a 10 second delay. Man. <laughs> In, in which ocean is the Bermuda Triangle located in? Patty. 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 Atlantic Ocean. That is correct. Hey. Patty. The Hatfields and the McCoys were <laughs> rival clans in what 1,500-mile mountain range? Frogger. Frogger. The Appalachians. Appalachians is correct. Oh my gosh. Home to the Parthenon, what city is often called the world's first democracy? Jeff. Jeff. Rome. Frogger. Correct. Frogger. Oh. Athens. Athens is correct. Oh, oh. Plymouth Rock is located in what U.S. state? Um, Frogger. Frogger. Massachusetts. Massachusetts is correct. The largest wooden airplane, the Spruce Goose, was built by who? Patty. Patty. Was it the Wright Brothers? <laughs> Sorry. Is that correct, Tom? <laughs> no. No, that's that, that is, that is Jeff. not correct. <laughs> Jeff. I'm being, I'm genuine, I'm genuine too, and they're laughing. I don't get it. <laughs> Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes is correct. I love the level of conviction Jeff comes when he hits his buzzer. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like a buzz and everything's wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which city has the slogan, what happens here stays here? Patty. Oh. P Patty. Las Vegas. Las Vegas is correct. In area, what's the largest state east of the Mississippi River? Frogger. 
Frogger. Florida. Incorrect. Mm-hmm. Farther north, Patty. Up, up, up. <laughs> Patty, Patty. That means up. Patty. Minnesota, don't you know? That's probably right. Minnesota's incorrect. Hey! Oh, hey Jeff. He said incorrect. Oh, <laughs> wow. Jeff. I said correct. Incorrect. Jeff, Jeff I'm going to go with Michigan. Michigan is correct. Nice pull. Good pull. Michigan's well done. Bigger than it. it. Who wrote the graduation friendly book, Oh, the Places You'll Go? Frogger. Frogger. I'm an elementary school teacher. It was Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, yes. <laughs> what seamstress sewed the first U.S. flag? Patty. Patty. I, I know this from history. It's Betty Ross. <clears throat> Jeff. We'll give it to you, Patty. <laughs> oh, come on. It's Betsy. <laughs> oh, that's, Betsy. yeah. We'll give you come on. Point. You give we'll it give to me. You point. know I know. It's, I was off by one letter. Come on. <laughs> I get the point. I'm desperate here. <laughs> <I'm> desperate. <laughs> You know what? Give, what give him a half a point, too, for that. It's well, he gave you both a full point. Oh, okay. You, you, each, you each get a full point. <laughs> what is the name of the NHL team in Toronto? Patty. Patty. That's the Maple Leafs. That is correct. What awards has an EGOT winner won? Frogger. Frogger. That's an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. That is correct. Wow. Huh. How many colors are there in a rainbow? Oh, I'm 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 out because I don't want to count. Frogger. <laughs> Frogger. I'm counting seven. <laughs> seven is correct. <laughs> Roy G. Bib. Sticking with numbers, who was the first gymnast to score a perfect ten? Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, Nadia Comaneci. Nadia Comaneci, yes, good pull. Uh, what reason was Donald Duck banned in Finland? <laughs> Frogger. <laughs> I want to know this now. <laughs> Because the cat wouldn't wear any pants. Because <laughs> he never wore pants. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's oh a my good God. one. <laughs> yeah, he, he and Winnie the Pooh were locked up. <laughs> <laughs> like to this day or <laughs> at some point in the past. Yeah. Oh, stand in the corner with the statue of David. <laughs> oh, bother. <laughs> What vegetable does Popeye utilize Patty. as a last-minute source of strength? Patty. Spinach. Da, 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 da. Spinach is correct. What's the dog's name in the series Tom and Jerry? Oh, Patty? There's a dog? Yeah. Patty. Is it Bruno? No. Frogger. Frogger. It's Spike, isn't it? I think it is. Spike. Spike. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only impersonation you get today. <laughs> can you do now? Can you can you laugh like Muttley? I can. Yes, I can actually. <laughs> <laughs> the wheels are coming off the bus. They've been where, off where, for a while. Where will the Where will the college football 2023 national championship be played? I don't know. Actually, That's a good question. I have no idea. Anybody? No. No. SoFi Stadium. Oh. Oh. Really? Nice. Interesting. Everything's at SoFi nowadays. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Yes. Where will the 2022 World Cup be played? Patty. For, uh, Patty. I'm gonna say also SoFi Stadium. No, no, no. Looking, more, looking for more geography, Patty. It's not in the states. Jeff. Jeff. Dubai. Uh, incorrect. Frogger. You're in the right part of the world, though. Frogger. So not Brazil. Um, yeah. I'll go. With Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be his answer. Geography. Um, Saudi Arabia. It's in Qatar. Ah, uh, okay. Qatar. Well, what present-day Italian city does Mount Vesuvius overlook? Patty. Patty. Is it is it uh, Rome? Incorrect. Dang. Frogger. Pompeii. Frogger. Incorrect. But it's an ancient, ancient city. I don't, city yeah. yeah. Present day is what I said. Right, I know, I know. And so that was. Okay. <clears throat> what is it? It's Naples. 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 Oh. Yeah. What Naples. planet is closest to the Earth? Frogger. Frogger. Venus. Venus is correct. Huh. Right. That was Mars. <laughs> Which country is also called the Netherlands? Patty? Patty. Okay, it's probably wrong, but I don't care. Finland? Incorrect. (laughs) 
Okay, Frogger. <laughs> Frogger. It's Holland. It is Holland. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Only only two mammals like spicy food. <laughs> One is the tree shrew. What's the other? Jeff. Jeff. Humans. That is correct. What is the name of the biggest technology company in South Korea? Frogger. Frogger. Samsung? Samsung's correct. Yeah. Nice. Which animal can be seen on a Porsche logo? Frogger. Frogger. A, a mosquito. I saw one the other day. <laughs> no, no, but it sounds like somebody just made the sound, though. <laughs> what is it, Big T? It's a horse. Oh, cool. Horse, of course. Hey, hey, Big T, we've got to wrap it up. Let's go ahead and check the score. Uh, Jeff, respectable, was seven. Frogger's got 16. Patty's got 11. Producer Sarah has Aww. 22. She took the day. Hey! Wow! <laughs> Big T, thanks for swinging by. We also would like to thank our guests. Again, Jeff Barber, manager of the Maine. Amanda Fisher, executive director of ILEAD California Charter Schools. Producer Sarah, thanks for everything you do. Engineer Patty, Big T, and thank you for listening. Hey, everybody, life is hard, we, but we've been we've all been put here to help each other along. Be well, do good. Join us again next week and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I am Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS.